dreams come true. There is no limit to what we can do. Turning no's to yes, leaving doubt behind, releasing the stress. We were born to shine. You're now tuned in to the Sade Champagne Show. show. With the cast, Christina Renee, Renee, Rick and Melissa Wood, Lisa Lee Veronica Escobar Winners, Ariana Cade, and all y'all cool, Falama, celebrity guest interviews, segments on health. Wellness, creativity, entrepreneurship, spirituality, hot topics, and more. You're now tuned in to the Sade Champagne Show. Good evening, everyone. That was Eleni with Rush. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 29 of the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Every episode is available on iTunes. Search the Sade Champagne Show, and you can download them for free. Also, my Sade Champagne YouTube channel is another place where you can listen to the show afterwards. Thanks to everyone for tuning in from all around the globe. All the episodes of my show are available at blogtalkradio.com slash grindhard underscore radio. I've also posted the direct link to this episode on my Twitter and Facebook pages, so you can tune in at any time throughout the evening. Thank you to Travis Miller for creating and producing my show's theme song and to Scott Swish for mixing it. If this is your first time listening, I'm a professional musical artist, performer, inspirational speaker, and entrepreneur. I have created, directed, and executive produced over 200 charitable and inspirational events, including my popular Power of a Dream Tour. I love mentoring, coaching, authentically being myself, and using my platform to encourage, empower, and bring out the gold in others. Tonight, our special celebrity guest is award-winning multimedia journalist and editor, Ernest Owens. His work has been featured on the Huffington Post, USA Today, Al Jazeera, English, The Advocate, The Root, and other media outlets. Most recently, he made headlines for his controversial tweets, to Justin Timberlake after the 2016 BET Awards. We also have a brand new Living with Fearless Joy with Rick and Melissa Wood segment, Supermodeling You with Ariana Carde segment, and Wellness Made Simple with Veronica segment tonight. Next week, we are going to be at the Big Fresno Fair. I'm going to be performing there on our Power of a Dream Tour. I'm super excited about that. It's one of the biggest fairs in California, if not the biggest one. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to be there next Sunday, October 9th, from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m., and then I'm heading back to Ventura County because, you know, i got such a busy week ahead mentoring and performing and all that fun stuff. So make sure you guys come out and say hi. My Power Dream Tour is always booking new shows and performances. This fall, we're going to be in San Luis Obispo, Ventura, Oxnard, Orange County, back in Fresno, Bakersfield, and more. We love traveling, and if you're looking to bring Power Dream Tour or any of our award-winning, critically acclaimed artists or speakers to your city or event, please email me at sadechampagnemusic at gmail.com. Once again, that's sadechampagnemusic at gmail.com for more details. And if you go to my Facebook music page, Sade Champagne, you can see our full schedule. Just look under events. Lastly, I want to thank you everyone who has been subscribing, sharing, and watching all my new videos. I'm constantly writing new pieces and creating new songs, and I'm going into the recording studio soon. To find out more about my musical journey and how you can be involved, just check out GoFundMe.com slash Sade Champagne Music. Once again, that's GoFundMe.com slash Sade Champagne Music. As you know, I will be live tweeting and posting on Facebook all show long, and we want to know your thoughts. Tweet me at Sade Champagne. Facebook me at Sade Champagne. Instagram, I'm Sade Champagne. Hashtag Sade Champagne Show or GHR to join in the conversation. And shout out to everyone. You guys tweet me every week. You Facebook me, Instagram me, YouTube, email, and I'm just so thankful for your support. So our special celebrity guest is on the line right now. We've got to bring him into the studio. He's originally from Chicago, Illinois, 
Ernest Owens is an award-winning multimedia journalist and editor for Philadelphia magazine, G. Philly. A graduate from the University of Pennsylvania, he launched a career in media as a talk radio show host for WQHS Radio and as a video producer and op-ed columnist for The Daily Pennsylvanian. He is currently producing and starring in his own television talk show, Earnestly Speaking, at Philadelphia Community Access Media, where he is the youngest TV talk show host in Philadelphia. His work has been featured on the Huffington Post, USA Today, Al Jazeera English, The Advocate, The Root, and other media outlets. He is a member of the Radio Television Digital News Association, the Society of Professional Journalists, National Association of Black Journalists, the Association for Black Journalists, and the Online News Association. He is writing and filmmaking. His writing and filmmaking has even been honored with the Gold Circle Award by the Columbia Scholastic Press Association and a finalist award for the Tribeca Film Festival. Hey, Ernest, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on the show, Sade. It's an honor. I'm so glad to have you. We want to welcome you to the Sade Champagne Show, Season 2, Episode 29. Yes, yeah, sounds great. I'm I'm like I'm extremely excited. I'm I'm in Philadelphia right now, so to know that you're on the other side of town or the other side of the country is is um, impeccable. I'm really enthusiastic. It's later over here in Philly, uh, which was which was perfect <laughs> for my schedule and um, awesome for um, the listeners over there on the West Coast. So I'm enthusiastic. Love California. Definitely. Well, you know, I found for our listeners who don't know, I found out about Ernest through the Scorpion Show, which is one of my favorite. YouTube shows and two of my favorite YouTubers, Kevin and Mikhail, and they had you on when they were talking about the BET Awards and then ended up having you on again. And I just was so drawn to you as a person and drawn to, you know, just your individuality and just the freedom that you have to be yourself and think for yourself. Thank I you. That was super cool. Thank you so, so much. I mean, you... um, Ke- go ahead. No, I was gonna say Kevin and Mikel are really great friends of mine. Um, they're they're also based in Philadelphia too. Um, their their house is not too far from mine. They live on Northfield. I live in West. So um, it's it was it was it was something that was you know we had known each other for a while at many events, and I'm also a fan of their program as well. And just to be an opportunity on their show and and a lot of their followers and subscribers um, just checking me out as my own individual brand and personality has been an awesome experience. So I'm just happy to be a part of this as well. Mm -hmm, Definitely. It's funny because I actually met Mikhail when he and Kevin were in California a few years ago for, I think, the Grammys. I want to say it was the Grammys. And so I met him at the Grove there, and so it was super cool, you know, to be able to chat with him and everything and let him know how big of an inspiration they have been to me as well in my dreams. So I want to find out from you, when did you first get into journalism, and when did you know that you wanted this to be your life? Well, um, it really started for the most part in college. You know, I, I before I was in college, my you know I I lived in I was born in Chicago, and I grew up in Houston, Texas. And you know, my career paths and opportunities were limited based on my community uh, where I was from. Mm-hmm. You know, there was only a certain you know um, representations of what what professional things that young black men can do um, that I saw. It was politician. Um, entertainer, actor, um, athlete, Mm -hmm. Uh, the options were really Mm -hmm. limited based on access and accessibility. And in my high school that I went to, um, Beyonce had attended it, but she didn't stay the whole time. That, that's one notable thing. I was at Lee Felsic High School, and we had a lot of great fa- – we, we had um, Rashad Lewis, a famous NBA player. We've had some great NFL players. So the, the, the interesting wow. aspect of my school and how I grew up was, was a lot of athletes and entertainers. So for me, I didn't want to be an entertainer. I wanted to be – you know, I wanted to be uh, – I was interested in politics and, and law, mm-hmm. so I was thinking I was going to go up that track. But when I came mm-hmm. to the University of Philadelphia, um, the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, I, you know, gained a vast understanding of all of these different opportunities and resources. And, you know, I really re- found out that, you know, my interest was speaking out more about, you know, the issues rather than necessarily – you know, putting myself in this studious position of creating legislation. Um, and that really mm-hmm. shaped my focus of having conversations about tough issues, interacting with people, and, and, and 
without even realizing it, um, I end up taking a path in journalism na- naturally. Um, it started through mm-hmm. a radio show I had on college campus. I had for four years. And then while mm-hmm. I was doing that radio show, I started to express myself through writing, and then I started doing internships. And things just kind of build off of that. And then next thing I know, I, I didn't realize that I was a journalist, but that was what it was. Mm-hmm. And I started to pursue mm-hmm. it very heavily, and the opportunities started coming in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Were your family and friends supportive of your decision for this to become your career and your life? Um, for the most part, yes. I think that, you know, I was great. I mean, I had done a lot of great things in high school. I was a class president, bag touring of my high school class. Um, when I came to Penn, which was in a very competitive environment, it's an Ivy League school. It's it's people from across the world. I mean, everyone is a, is a top liner or some type of genius in their own right. It was a very interesting atmosphere because, you know, where I used to be was you could do anything. And I come in this environment and I had to really stand firm on those beliefs because too often around me, and still to this day, a lot of my peers and people at that institution, um, they really follow, as much as we were smart and intelligent and creative and brilliant, a lot of us, you know, kind of were scared to take risks. And the risk mm-hmm. factor was based on the fact that there was, you know, personally intrinsic goals versus what people were doing externally, meaning that, you know, people did it for their mom, their parents. They did it. Their mm-hmm. parents made them do it. You know, they weren't necessarily self-driven mm-hmm. as much. And for me, I knew that my interest in, in journalism and my passion for my career now was self-driven. It was something that I found out for myself, and it was something that I was personally interested in. And my mom and my mentors and and my friends back home and the people around me, you know, they were supportive because it was more so if this is what you want, you'll make it happen for yourself. And so that Mm -hmm. was what I had to realize is that, you know, this was a different route. And if it was something that I was serious about, you know, I had to prove it to myself before I proved it to anyone else. And, you know, if it was Mm -hmm. a success and if it was going to turn out the right way, that was going to be my doing. If it was a failure, it was my doing. But either way it mm-hmm. went, it was still my – I had the ability to take control of, you know, my career. And, 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 and the support was more so in if this is what you want and you're willing to make it happen, who, who are they or who are we in regards to my family and friends to stop you? Mm-hmm. And, and that's kind of what gave me the type of, you know, inspiration and, and motivation to just pursue this and, and do it without any constraint. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So with that being said – have you always been a leader and confident in yourself? Or is that something that you grew into over time? I think it's it's interesting. I mean, for the most part, I've always kind of been consistently confident. Um, Mm -hmm. Focus is what I think, you know, you know, has, has, has evolved through time. Um, You know, if there was something I like, I I think my personality is one of those, I'm very polarizing in the sense that if I like something, I love it, and I'm going to do it Mm -hmm. with all the energy in the world. And if I don't Mm -hmm. like something, (laughs) I'm absolutely going to abolish it. Um, Mm -hmm. With that being said, I had to really realize that through time, I liked a lot of things, I loved a lot of things. And, you know, when leading, I guess being a leader in my own life and trying to you know, lead organizations and lead movements and, 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 and things in my own career and outside it, I realized that focus was, was one of the things that took time. And so, you know, I, it's, a, it's a learning process is that everything, everything you can't say yes to, everything that you like, you, have to, you, you can't love everything to the same degree. And so through time in my career, I've really focused on what my strengths are, what my interests are. Even if I can do it, that doesn't mean that I have to. Or just because Mm. it's there doesn't mean it's up for me to take. And so I think focus is something that through time I've been able to mature in. And Mm. that's, you know, I'm getting into, I'm going to become 25 um, next month. And so I'm looking Mm. to, you know, I'm, I'm getting a quarter of a century. And so there's mm-hmm. certain aspects of my of my of my um, vision that I really want to hold on to. One of the things that I've gotten better with through time and something that I've sh- learned is that you know confidence has always been there, but focus mm-hmm. on what I want and and how I want it and eliminating a lot of distractions or just you know access has been the mm-hmm. key. Mhm, mhm. That's really good. You know because I talk to my students a lot about that. Is there's a difference between good and best. 
You know what I mean? And oftentimes, Mm -hmm. you know, we do say a yes to a lot of things that even like you say, we may be good at it. It may, you know, seem like something we're interested in. But like you said, the difference between like focusing and what you're deeply passionate about and you're going to be able to give your all to. And then there will be times when we can multitask, you know, but those are things people usually have to learn over time. Right. So that right. focus is I agree. Huge. Definitely agree. Definitely agree. So what is your favorite story you've covered so far? Oh, or one God, of them, because I know you've covered a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of stories. But I, I but, but 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 I will say one of my most intriguing and consistent, exciting um stories or theme of stories I've been focusing on for the past year is racism in the LGBTQ community. That is something wow. that, you know, I've kind of um, have taken with a, a lot of focus and energy. I think it's mm-hmm. something that's unique. It's personal. It's it's uh, mm-hmm. it's intersectional. It's current to me. And you mm-hmm. know, there's a lot of stories I do that you know I'll write about it today, tomorrow. I, I won't say I forgot about it, but it wouldn't necessarily stick with me as much. There's been a lot of I've done lots of interviews um, with notable people in the community, and they're great, but. Mm-hmm. You know, following a story or a subject matter, a theme for a long period of time, I would say that my one of my, my hallmark accomplishments in my career thus far has been really um, getting very investigative and, and intense and intuitive with covering this angle um, in stories. It's not something that's publicized mm-hmm. that much. Um, little, mm-hmm. little, to, little, little research and reports have been done on it because not too many people in our community, I mean, there's not too many people mm-hmm. of color that's openly LGBTQ in our industry that's out. Mm-hmm. And if they are, they're not mm-hmm. doing the kind of reporting that is fixated on this subject matter. And so this is, mm-hmm. you know, a moment where I created my own lane. And when we mm-hmm. speak about leadership, it, it sometimes it's amazed about, you know, finding something, finding something that interests you and running with it and really making, you know, an interesting, um, set of recommendations and ideas. And so for this, I've been studying, you know, um, racial discrimination in, uh, mm-hmm. in, in, in private and public spaces, um, looking mm-hmm. at activists and community organizers who are trying to combat these issues, looking at policies mm-hmm. on the state and local level that is trying to address mm-hmm. these issues and bringing a conversation that has not happened in our community in a long time back into the general mm-hmm. conversation. And it's been it's been a very um, challenging um, experience, but a very inspirational, moving one as well. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because people would not know that there is racism in you know the LGBTQ community. You know, um, Cleo Monago, who's on Roland Martin's News One Now show, talks about that often, and people tend to find it shock communities that has experienced so much discrimination themselves that they would be some of the most open people. You know what I mean? But you know, it's, so, but you know that's funny because the, 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 you know, that's always the 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 shocker. That's always the tagline, right? But it's ridiculous because, mm-hmm. you know, sexual orientation, gender identity is different from racial identity. In the same way that people will wonder why is the African American community amongst their own homophobic mm-hmm. or express that, mm-hmm. it's the same reason mm-hmm. because those individual groups do not intersect in any type of way to one another mm-hmm. um, as easy as we assume it is, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, when you're talking about, you know, ac- access and equity, you know, there have been many communities that are oppressed that don't get along, right? I mean, there's sexism mm-hmm. still in various communities. Mm-hmm. There's still sexism across the board, or mm-hmm. regardless of race, mm-hmm. regardless of a religion, regardless of faith, you would think that right. because people have religious identities and faith and values, they wouldn't, you know, kill one another. So, or, or they wouldn't, you know, fight one another and all these things. But I mean, in reality, you know, there is always this causation, this false correlation and causation that happens. And I think that what we have to realize is that we have to look at these things individually. Racism. Right. Is racism, you know, being, you know, openly LGBTQ or whatnot does not shield you from having racial bias. The same way that being of a different ethnicity outside of being white does not shield you from being homophobic. It, it's it's, it's right. two different things. And, you know, uncovering 
a lot of the bias or the nuance or the misperception of this issue has been very um, fixated in my journalism. It's been something that I have tried very hard to combat those misperceptions so that people can get help. Um, there's a lot of people mm-hmm. who are in vulnerable communities, you know, people of color, um, such as LGBTQ people of color, they're facing homophobia and racism at the same time. Mm-hmm. And that's a hard, mm-hmm. that's hard. That's hard. That's hard for people. Mm-hmm. That's a harder, that's a hard ladder to climb. And then add in youthfulness and age and, 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 and money and class mm-hmm. dynamics and all of those factors. And you start to realize that, you know, when you look in really at who are the most severely hit individuals, it's LGBTQ mm-hmm. people of color and LGBTQ people, mm-hmm. youth, to be more specific, mm-hmm. that are getting hit the hardest with all of the things happening to them. And it should right. be no surprise that this translates into health, mental health issues, socio mm-hmm. socioeconomic issues, crime and policing issues. It's mm-hmm. a lot of things that are at the intersect of the, of these issues. And so if bringing this out more in the open can help start the healing process, start the conversations, mm-hmm. Um, that's that's the overall accomplishment and goal that I would hope my journalism produce. Mm-hmm. And I feel like exactly like you said, you have created a lane for yourself and um, a, a new category, you know, um, for better lack of words, that I think that you are, um, you know, such a great representation for and going to help bridge the gap you know, um, for a lot of things that have been separate. Because I understand exactly what you're saying, you know, but it is challenging for me in the sense of, you know, I see all discrimination as the same. Like, I, even though I know it's separate issues, I feel that I want correct, to correct. These people no matter what they're going through because I look at them as a human being. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would not, mm-hmm. I would not want to say that I want to discriminate them because of this because I've been bullied and dealt with all types of torment in my life. And so regardless of what it is that person's going through or who they are, I see it all as the same pain. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's hard for me, you know, to see that people will have those different types of biases. And it's like, but you're, you're being bullied yourself. So why do you want to bully someone else? You know? And so, but well, I know, like, I mean, it's it, it, to talk about. you know, hurt, hurt, hurt people, hurt people, you know, and that tends to be the common thread. I mean, amongst various groups, you know, um, mm-hmm. whether they're poor whether they're mm-hmm. feeling like they're not excluded, whether they're byproducts of Islamophobia, mm-hmm. xenophobia, discrimination, yeah. you know, slut shaming, fat shaming. I mean, all of that, all of these mm-hmm. various identity issues and phobias and, and, and hatred, essentially, yeah. is, is rooted in, in defense mechanisms, mm-hmm. primarily. It's true. It's true. How do you stay confident while working in industries that have been known to tear people down? Oh, well, I mean, every industry can tear someone down, essentially, right? Um, mm. I mean, the reality is that you got to focus, you know, if people, you know, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say the term mind your business, but if, if people focus <laughs> more on, if, if people focus more on why they're doing it versus mm-hmm. what they're doing, um, so many people are just mm. doing things. I think, uh, you know, I was talking to a friend earlier today about producing mass distraction versus mass communication, mm-hmm. mass information, mass, you know, um, in, in exchange, mm-hmm. right? Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of people in this business and just outside, of, you know, in, in different industries across the table mm-hmm. that are not worried, mm-hmm. that are so busy worried about everything else other than what they're doing and why they're doing it. And mm-hmm. how I keep myself mm-hmm. focused and confident is that I'm worried about what I'm doing, essentially keeping your eyes on the prize. You know, why are you, what are you doing today? You know, every day, you know, even, even a week, ago, I try to think every day. What is going to be mm-hmm. special about today? Um, every day mm-hmm. I look at what is special about today. What is, what is mm-hmm. the task that needs to be done today? And what, why am I here today in my life? That's good. What is the, what's purpose? Mm-hmm. What's the purpose? What's, 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 what's getting me up in the morning? What's inspiring me? Mm-hmm. There's, there's always something. Fortunately for myself, I, I keep myself, I try to keep a preoccupied schedule you know, where I can mm-hmm. further my, my dreams and the things I want to do. But I have a purpose for the day, and that's what I'm going to focus on today, right? Today I got to meet mm-hmm. uh, Soliad O'Brien for an interview for a TV show. And then wow. I had your radio show this evening, and I saw a play mm-hmm. today. And it was just I had things to look forward to. Tomorrow I have some things I'm looking forward to. Actually, I got mm-hmm. an interesting cemetery social event I'm looking forward to tomorrow evening, the next day mm-hmm. on Friday. 
I'm looking forward to a special mm-hmm. important conference call I need to really make about an opportunity. Um, Saturday, I'm mm-hmm. going to Harrisburg. I mean, I have things that I look forward to that enth- that excites me. And I think that mm-hmm. as long as you have things in your day or something to wake up to the next day, a person, mm-hmm. an opportunity, a job, something, mm-hmm. you just need to focus on that and figure out and ask yourself why are you doing that. And as long as mm-hmm. you have a purpose, you know, you know, nowadays, you know, I, I tell people my new thing, I tell people that are, you know, critical of me or have some tip. I mean, go find your purpose. That's what I tell you. Go find your purpose. Exactly. Go find your purpose today. And I'm not your purpose for today because you're not my purpose for today. We didn't, we were not meant to communicate today in some way. I mean, go find what you have to do today. And I'm not that, I'm not that for you. <laughs> oh, go find so that good. purpose. Go find your purpose is what I really tell a lot of people is that figure out mm-hmm. what, what, what is it that you're brought here to do? What, what, what are you supposed to do today? Go do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Go find that's that purpose. Really I'm not your purpose. Um, that's, that's how I kind of combat a lot of the, 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 the people in the business that attempt to tear people down and, you know, in that realm is that, you know, go find your purpose today. And, and I'm not the purpose. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's mm-hmm. important. Guys, Ernest has so many quotable moments. I'm taking notes, and I'm going to be going back listening to the show. Obviously, I love listening to my own show anyway, so I'm going to be quoting him awesome. on Twitter yeah, and Facebook because yeah. this is such wise and, and vital things that I think people should receive. So tell us about a time when you wanted to quit, and how did you overcome that moment? Oh, I don't know. That's such a uh, – it's been a minute since I've quit something or something. Well, well, I, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, okay. Well, recently, I'll put it this way about quitting. I mean, mm-hmm. I know, I know where you're going with the question, but I want, I want to challenge it this way. I want to spin it around a little bit. So I had a okay, column um, at, I had a column at a publication called Metro. It was called the Earnest Opinion. It was a column that I had um, for about a good year and a half, close to two years. Um, it was very popular in the city, um, in Philadelphia. People read it. People loved it. It was controversial. I hate that word, but we, we'll, we'll just say it. But it's very, it was a very provocative, you know, piece of work. And in many ways, mm-hmm. it, it opened a lot of doors for me in my career. Um, but at some degree, you know, I'm a person that naturally likes to, you know, evolve. And not necessarily evolve in the sense that I have to always do something new, but there's a point mm-hmm. where when I feel like I'm becoming predictable, I like to mix up for myself or mm-hmm. I have to challenge myself. And this summer mm-hmm. with all the craziness that happened with the Justin Timberlake tweet, Twitter exchange and just opening my mm-hmm. door and my visibility, I have a, I have a verified Twitter account now. It's, it's a miracle. Yeah, it's, I noticed. It's, 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 it's a crazy, it's, thank you. It's, a, it's a, these type of, you know, you know, individual victories um, got me to a point where I felt like I wanted to take a lot of my talent and put it in different places um, and, and not limit myself. And so I always tell people that when an opportunity becomes limiting, it's no longer opportunity. It becomes a wedge. And as mm-hmm. much as it was a wonderful experience, it became in many ways a wedge between me opening myself up to taking my talent, my work elsewhere um, in some degree. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I, you know, I resigned from the column. I said, you know, I don't, not from doing the column. It will be going somewhere very soon, wink, wink. But mm-hmm. it, it, for that space, for that place at that moment, I wanted to take it somewhere else. And so I got the call. I was very fortunate to call the shots on my own terms. And, you know, mm-hmm. they would write a farewell column. And I was, and my readers and a lot of my fans who enjoyed the column, they were, you know, they were heartbroken a little bit and just, you know, surprised and didn't mm-hmm. understand why. Because most people think that when you lead things, it has to be mm-hmm. – tumultuous. It has to be problematic. Mm-hmm. It has to be a depressing thing. And it was like, no, I'm, I'm good. You all, it's, everything's good. I'm choosing this. I'm doing this for myself. Mm-hmm. I want to open myself up to bigger ships. And sometimes you can't have mm-hmm. bigger ships come in if you're still holding on to smaller parking lots, right? And smaller ports. Oh, that's and so, so good. I want to have a bigger harbor for myself. You know, I want to have a bigger, a bigger harbor for my goals because I recognize mm-hmm. very quickly and I don't, and anybody who's in the industry who does hard work, who does great things and, and has a career, a lot of times in your life, 
you can be in the way of yourself having the kind of opportunities you know you deserve. So you're used to doing something a certain way because that gives you success or that gives you satisfaction and gratification. But at mm-hmm. one point in the game, you can have that gratification, you can have that excitement, you can have that, but if it's in the way of you being able to transform your space and put you in a place where you can go to infinity and beyond or go somewhere else, then that no longer mm-hmm. is a space for you. And so as mm-hmm. much as I had a great readership and a great following to my column mm-hmm. in Philly, I started thinking to myself, you know what, I want to do something a little bit more than just Philly. I want to go a little mm-hmm. bit more national. I want to write about mm-hmm. a little bit more different things. I want to have the space mm-hmm. and the flexibility to do that. And so mm-hmm. initially, two years, where I was two years ago is not where I am mm-hmm. now. And I yeah. think that too often we cre- we're we holding on to things based on seniority. And that's not how it works. You know, it's mm-hmm. about, you know, seniority. I'm going to always pick maturity over seniority. I'm going to always mm-hmm. pick growing gradually versus holding on to something just because, just because. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that mm-hmm. if the people in your life and your professional space are supportive of you, they will let you flock your wings when they feel like they mm-hmm. – can no longer provide you that, that, that space. So I guess mm-hmm. what I mean by quitting is that sometimes you have to quit in order to win. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that may be the, mm-hmm. the message. And so the people out there, mm-hmm. you know, as long as you know what's next or you have an idea or you're in a space professionally and emotionally mm-hmm. where you feel like you can go somewhere else or you feel excited or promising of what's next to come, that's the time we should mm-hmm. take the lead. For me, mm-hmm. I didn't need an immediate door to open the day after I decided to leave. I knew mm-hmm. that leaving at that moment, I knew that there were some things waiting for me. And very quickly mm-hmm. now, those things are coming to fruition faster than I would have imagined. And that was because mm-hmm. I had opened myself up to new possibilities, and I took some time mm-hmm. To recharge, you know, throughout mm-hmm. all of your pursuits, you got to give yourself space to recharge, um, to, mm-hmm. to think about new things, to give yourself a breather. You know, for a minute, I had a column that was very much so local. And so taking mm-hmm. some time, a couple of weeks to just breathe and just do my thing, I am now shifting my column on my op-ed writing to a national mm-hmm. platform that will be revealed very, very soon. So stay tuned at that. Wow. But I have to give myself space. To, to recharge my mind and my writing and my and the way I thought. And so I, I'm happy that I gave myself that space. And I also gave myself mm-hmm. a new season to do it. Mm. I'm telling you, Ernest, I believe that not only are you going to be national, but you're going to be international. And I think you're also a powerful motivational speaker, too, and an author, like as far as writing books. So I see all those things in your very, very, very near future. And I'm excited for you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. You're talking, I'm like, man, so many amazing quotable things that you're saying and so much wisdom and so much vibrancy, you know, and such like a wealth of security in who you are, you know what I mean? And so that's really always exciting for me to hear and to be able to engage with something like that. And so I'm super stoked for you. I want to chat for a minute or so about the BET Awards and with Justin Timberlake. And I want to take it in this direction. I would like Thank to you. share with our <laughs> listeners. I would like for you to share it with our listeners and um and and for other artists out there who could be listening who are not of African American or Black descent and that would love to do music and um and be a part of community that would be more traditionally known what African Americans and Black people love. What are some words that you would share with them how they can do what they love but still be conscious of what is happening around them? You know what I mean? Like what are some things that you would want them to know, you know, being a consumer, being someone in the space that you're in, you know, because sometimes I don't know if these artists think about these particular things. I don't know if they have people on their team that are thinking about these things because, unfortunately, things can be – it can start going just toward the direction of money and fame and all that and not actually Mm -hmm. think about the Correct, correct, yeah. So I'd like for you to share what are some what would you what are some words of wisdom that you'd want to give to them or some words of consciousness that you'd want them to think about being an artist and being on the platform that they have. Correct. Um, that's fine. I, I thank you for the spin on that question. I mean, I'm happy that I went in this direction. 
Um, because I think so much has happened since. I mean, you know what's ironic? Because today's the 28th. That Twitter exchange happened June 28th. So it's been I think we June, got July, July to August, time. August, September, oh, three are. months. Yeah, I was going to say that I'm happy that, you know, that we, we're taking this conversation a different angle. I say it's funny because today is um, September 28th. That incident happened mm-hmm. on June 28th. So it's really been like wow. three months. It's been three months ago to this day, actually. Wow. Around this time of the night, I think about a couple hours, you know, around this time of the night, it happened, right, um, mm-hmm. three months ago. Um, so, and my life has wow. been so different since then. It's, it's completely changed um, I'm completely sure. since then. Um, a lot has happened since then. But what I think is hasn't changed is the message, the values, um, and what I was speaking about in that tweet. That hasn't changed. Um, mm-hmm. to, to people who are in, interested in community, you know, it's just about knowing your audience. And it's not about mm-hmm. just knowing your audience for your own benefit, but it's called having empathy. It's called actually talking to the people you want to reach out to. It doesn't really matter. I mean, to, to many degree, if you want, you know, the things that you're interested in, you need to, number one, you need to ask yourself why you're interested in it, because that's important. I think what is missing out of everything that we're doing today is why. Too many people do not know why they're doing what they're doing. They get up in the morning, they get this job, they'll, they'll get they're mm-hmm. dating this girl or this guy, and they're never asking themselves, why am I in this relationship? Why am I working this job? Why am I, you mm-hmm. know, wearing this dress? Like, have a reason for why you're doing the things that you're doing. Because if you mm-hmm. don't, the, the why is your purpose. And so I want to, you know, I think the first thing you have to do for anyone who's interested in cultures and things, why are you interested in that culture? What's mm-hmm. your purpose? What is your purpose? Mm-hmm. And figure out exactly why. And then from mm-hmm. there, Share that information and get feedback from the very community to which you're interested in. Because Mm -hmm. if you're going around, you know, um, integrating yourself in spaces without the consent nor the, the, the welcomeness of that, say, group, then that's when conflict will arise. You know, mm-hmm. you got to think, mm-hmm. you got to think before you speak. You got to think before you leap. You have to really be mindful. Um, I think the error in that situation was a situation where someone was speaking about something they didn't know anything about or they weren't well versed in. And it ethically mm-hmm. flopped on his behalf because he was speaking mm-hmm. about things and about communities and about people and about issues that he himself had not really studied up on. And he fumbled mm-hmm. on a national, well, international space, a global space like mm-hmm. Twitter. And so I think mm-hmm. that, that, that if, you know, if he was to take more time, which he later on did, and he mm-hmm. apologized, right? Mm-hmm. If he took more time to explore the why when, before he made that tweet, he probably mm-hmm. would have been in a different space. So I always tell people, go back to the why. Figure out your purpose. Mm-hmm. Figure out, mm-hmm. before you respond and react, figure out why you're responding the way you are. What do you think? Mm-hmm. And run it by somebody. And in this situation, mm-hmm. you know, what would it have looked like if he would have ran those thoughts by a couple of people around him that are experts? I mean, with all that money, mm-hmm. all those connections, I mean, you're taking pictures mm-hmm. with the president, you're hanging out with. Mm-hmm. All of these big names, there's no mm-hmm. reason why you couldn't hit a friend up or talk to somebody but and think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. You know, that, that, that mm-hmm. to me is the biggest advice I give you. Mm-hmm. It was very simple. You know, people mm-hmm. have common sense. They know, people know when things are a little off. And if they don't mm-hmm. know, they, they know where to go. And I think sometimes with most mm-hmm. people, there's a sense of stubbornness and laziness to be challenged. Mm-hmm. A lot of times mm-hmm. people don't want to be challenged. They don't want to be mm-hmm. corrected. They don't want anyone to, to tell them, you know, this is not a good idea because they're so gun ho mm-hmm. on having instant gratification that they don't think. And so as they keep going through the years and not being corrected or checked on these issues, then eventually they fall mm-hmm. flat. And that was what I think mm-hmm. happened that night three months ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that was really great advice that you gave for, you know, people listening in and people 
you know, that are passionate in these areas or that have interest in it, you know, um, and you said this throughout the whole night, you are, throughout our interview was about, you know, the importance of focus and also finding your purpose and the why for what you're doing, you know, because it's really about caring about people, you know what I mean? It's like really, that's so important and not just looking at it like how it can benefit us, but how it's going to benefit everyone around us. I had so much fun chatting with you tonight. I could chat with you for even longer, and i got to bring you back again sometime soon. Um, yeah, please can you show do. Everyone how they can, yeah, can you share with everyone how they can follow you and stay updated with your career? Oh, yes. Um, I'm, I'm the best at Twitter, um, clearly. Um, Twitter <laughs> at Mr. Ernest Owens. That is M-R-E-R-N-E-S-T. O W E N S. That is my Twitter handle, my Snapchat handle, and my Instagram handle. So you have all the handles. Um, I have a like page on Facebook. Again, it's Ernest Owens. Um, or you could do the Facebook underscore. Again, Mr. Ernest Owens. Um, mm-hmm. I also have a website. It's ErnestOwens.com. It's simple. ErnestOwens.com is the website. And I'm available. I, I, I'm very good on Twitter and social media. Um, I keep my stuff updated all the time. There's always new things happening. So I try to keep my um, channels um, very much so open for my followers to indulge in and engage in. So, um, yeah, just thank follow. Follow. Well, I follow back. So I retweet. Much, I do all of that. Yes, he is awesome. Thank you so thank much. You so much, Ernest. I look forward to having you back on the show again soon. Next up, we have Lisa Lewalt with The World is Ours. You're listening to the Sade Champagne Show on Grindr Radio. <laughs> Cause I just wanna die 
I'm Kevin Miller, and I believe every person deserves to feel great in their body and their life. I'm creating a community of people committed to empowering each other to achieve our dreams. Before I found my purpose, I had lost all hope of ever permanently getting back to a healthy weight. I'd tried every plan. I was stressed and overwhelmed about life and the future. Then I was introduced to a clinically proven, all-natural cleansing and nutrition system by my daughter. It's convenient, satisfying, and affordable. I released over 100 pounds and absolutely know I will reach my goal weight. I'm excited about life again, can play with my grandkids, and do anything I desire without any limitations. If any of this interests you, please call me at 805-218-7146. 805-218-7146. Have a great day. The Living with Fearless Joy segment on the Sade Champagne radio show features Rick and Melissa Wood, who run a ministry called Fearless Joy Ministries. Rick and Melissa have a passion to see people free from religion, free from fear, and living lives full of freedom and full of joy. Melissa has authored a book titled Eliminating Fear, How Removing the Fear of God Leads to Removing Fear in Life. If you would like to book Rick and Melissa for any speaking engagements, conferences, or to talk about eliminating fear, you can reach them at the website eliminatingfear.com. Just make sure to go to the Contact Us page where you can get more information and you can communicate with them personally. You can find Melissa at Melissa Joy Wood at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can find Rick at Rick C. Wood at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And right here on Grind Hard Radio on the Sade Champagne Show. Welcome back to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. I just finished up an amazing interview with award-winning journalist and media expert, Ernest Owens. And now we are ready for our Supermodel and You segment. Join health enthusiast, model, and inspirational speaker, Ariana Carde, in creating a lifestyle of confidence and creating your reality. Hashtag Supermodel and You to ask her your questions and join in the conversation. How are you doing tonight, Ariana? I am good. How are you doing, Sade? I'm doing very well. So I had a few questions I wanted to chat with you about tonight that I think our listeners would really love. Okay. So when did you first get into modeling? Uh, So for me, I actually got started quite young. And, um, And not because my family or like my mother pressured me into it, into it, but it was actually more of my own interest. And I actually grew up, um, it's kind of weird, even at a young age, but I saw the Victoria's Secret fashion show on television and um, I was just always captivated by the runway. And so I would always mimic trying to walk the runway and, um, my grandmother, she was actually one of the first African-American um, models in the uh, Ebony Fashion Fair. And so she did a lot of coats and gown modeling and, you know, runway and fashion. When I was younger, she would, um, I would always take my mom's heels and try to, like, walk in them. And so she would be like, all right, honey, well, if you're going to try to walk in them, let me show you. And so she would always teach me how to walk the runway, and I was just always intrigued by the elegance um, of the catwalk. And so for me, I had this passion and just interest in it. Um, but how I got started was I actually, I, I was born in California, but I grew up in Miami Beach, Miami, Florida. And, um, you know, growing up, I'm actually very naturally very thin and lanky (laughs) and I had my growth spurt at a very young age so I was like 11 years old and I was 5'8 and um, I actually was at the beach one day with my mother and um, this model scout he came up to my mom and was like have you ever considered getting your daughter into modeling and she was just like oh yeah you know like she had heard you know friends and family say throughout the years, like, oh, you should get her into modeling. She has a very unique look. And, you know, I was, like I said, I was very 
tall and lanky, and I had this curly hair and racially ambiguous. And um, But my mom just always was kept me in sports. And I, as well, was, um, I went to a performing arts school in Miami, and um, so she would always had me focusing on that. But um, this agent who had stopped us at the beach, he had given my mom her, his card, and he, you know, he's like, I, I hope that you would really consider it. And um, on the card, it was from the agency, Made a Model Miami, and my mom had heard of the agency before um, because actually one of my brother's friends that he played football with, his older brother um, was a male fashion model, and my mom was friends with his mom. And so he was actually with the same agency. And so my mom had told her that, you know, one of the agents had stopped us over the weekend, and she was like, you know, you should really take her down there to go meet with them. They're a really great agency. They're They're reputable. That was another thing my mom was always scared about was just scams and not knowing, you know, the industry and just being scared of also, you know, um, people who say that they are scouts and agents. And so, um, you know, my mom's friend assured her that they were a reputable agency, but still she wasn't too sold. And um, my mom's friend actually gave the agency our phone number, our house phone number at the time when we had house phones. (laughs) And um, they actually called my house um, for a month until my mom brought me in. And then um, I begged my mom to bring me in. She's like, all right, we'll give it a shot. And so when we went down there, um, they actually were representing Tyra Banks at the time. And so we saw their board and they had, you know, well-known models and they were, definitely reputable. So my mom's like, all right, you know, this seems legit. So my mom, you know, her only uh, thing was is that I had to keep my grades up. So um, being also underage, I had to get uh, permission from my school to model. And so I had a teacher that would travel with me and be on set. And um, I kept my grades up and – I actually was in competitive cheer at the time too, so and I was able to make it happen. Mm-hmm. I was it was definitely busy, uh, you know, interesting time. Being I started modeling when I was eleven, so um, I definitely mm-hmm. was exposed to a lot more as well. Being so young, starting in the industry, um, and actually, my very first job that I booked was with Cosmopolitan magazine. Um, wow! And. Yeah, and that was such a great experience. It's so funny, though, but I always had to kind of fib and say that I was a lot older than I was um, because I was in now, like, the big leagues. I mean, I was still with my agency. They booked me on a lot of catalog work, um, a lot of print work for, like, Kohl's, Target, JCPenney's. I worked with them regularly. They um, That's actually where my teacher would fly with me to in New York, and Chicago and Milwaukee, and wow, um, yeah, so it was a really great experience. And so when you know, I got started, if you can share, yeah, so if you can share with our listeners, you know, with you being in model, you know, I've been in the modeling industry for so long, and what's been on your heart lately, you know, um, about body shaming and about you know really being confident in who you are, and also you know sharing that with other people and not putting others down. Yes. Well, it's actually very interesting. Um, You know, growing up in the industry, per se, um, being a young girl, and you're still trying to find yourself either way, but also being in front or underneath a microscope pretty much or in front of a magnifying glass, you're always being critiqued. You're going to castings, and you're being critiqued against other models. So, um, you know, for me, I actually had a very challenging time with body image and because growing up, you're not really taught, you know, I mean, I, from my experience growing up, you know, you're just living and you're experiencing and I'm just learning from my environment and from my environment, mm-hmm. just from what I was seeing and experiencing within the industry wasn't a very healthy body image. And at the time, like now there's a healthy body image that is coming 
you know, forefront. And I'm really happy that now, like, the industry is kind of changing and accepting a stronger woman and a body. Mm -hmm. Um, Because for so long, Mm -hmm. it was for girls to be pressured to be thin. And this is actually Mm -hmm. what has brought me to where I am today. And even with um, my lifestyle brand, Wifey Fit, and the whole, Mm -hmm. um, the story and the passion and my, um, uh, the underlining message here is trying to teach women to learn to love themselves because that's ultimately, it's been a journey. It's been a process, even for me Mm -hmm. learning to love myself and accepting my body because for so long, like I, like I said, even though I was naturally thin, I was never thin enough or because I have Mm -hmm. naturally wider hips. Um, Mm -hmm. It's my bone structure. And so that was also very challenging because when I was still like in the teen um, doing like a teen catalog work and stuff like that, you know, I had wider hips. And so they would always just tell me, Oh, you need to lose weight. You need to lose weight just because they would take a tape measure and the numbers would Mm -hmm. be larger. But I wasn't necessarily wow. fat, so that Mm-mm. didn't mess with my head. And so being mm-hmm. a young girl, well, then I'm like, well, I have to be thin. I have to be thin. And I didn't really know how to properly eat. I didn't really know how to properly, like, work out. I didn't really learn about that. And so, you know, I'm mm-hmm. seeing, like, different advertising and magazines and TV, and I actually then turned to taking, like, diet pills and fat burners. Mm-hmm. And But out of mm-hmm. being a young girl and not knowing – what this chemical is and what it's really doing to my body and also adverse effects to other chemicals that I'm doing. And, and as I've mm-hmm. gotten older, like this, I had a really, I had an issue, a body issue image really when I was around, especially, well, the, my, my, my journey through modeling has been a long, kind of long and interesting. And I've taken, I've taken mm-hmm. some break, um, but then um, I actually moved back to California when I was um, mm-hmm. in high school, my freshman year. And so then mm-hmm. I took a, a break uh, in high school to kind of focus and be like a regular kid. And um, when I kind of got back into the modeling industry here in L.A., I was with another agency, and their models were very thin. And it was like the high, high fashion runway look. And I got a mm-hmm. lot of pressure, and that's when I really turned to then trying all these different supplements and the, you know, mm-hmm. fat burners. And I ended up actually in the hospital um, because I almost had liver failure. And wow, that yeah, and then that was a scary, you know, situation. And actually, my whole immune system ended up turning against me. So that was a learning mm-hmm. experience and kind of my first step on really becoming aware of my body. And, Mm -hmm. um, so then, you know, after that, I decided to kind of take a break from modeling because I felt like I had, there was so much pressure and I was like losing myself. Um, Mm -hmm. and so, you know, then that's when I actually, then I turned to the lifestyle of not caring and I was around 20, 21 and then I got into partying and, you know, that was a whole nother issue then of trying to just Mm -hmm. find my independence and as well then even, you know, having the mindset of, oh, I'm young and mm-hmm. you're not really focused, you're not paying attention to the lifestyle at that time and how it really affects you. And so, you know, mm-hmm. I gained weight and I got a little bit, you know, thicker and um, some people liked it, some people didn't. And, you know, mm-hmm. and then I got a lot of um, backlash also from my family, like, they would be like, oh, my God, you know, you got sick or, like, you know, but they would also Mm -hmm. kind of, like, uh, praise it, too, because of, you know, like, oh, yeah, now you've got some curves. And, but Mm -hmm. my issue, too, is that my, the, my, my body image was always a topic. They would always say, Mm -hmm. always think I'm, I'm too skinny, I'm this, I'm that. And it was just, like, always the first thing they would see me would always just bring up how I look. And so that always got frustrating mm-hmm. throughout the years. And mm-hmm. um, now, actually, these past few years, I've been dealing with it a lot more. And um, mm-hmm. and it's kind of interesting because this is what, really what I wanted to talk about in today about body shaming and, you know, just also how you can get bullied for it too. And people don't, aren't even aware of how they make other people feel 
um, just by their, I guess, unknowing judgment. And Mm -hmm. a lot of people do it because they're not really aware and they're not, uh, you know, a lot of people are kind of just living in this, um, what's the word, autopilot mode. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, and that's Mm -hmm. why I, I am building this lifestyle to try to kind of um, waken people up and create that awareness and help slow people down too and kind of teach people different tools that have helped me along the way and also building my confidence. And like I've talked about before, it's all about confidence. And I talk about this, it's because I've been going through this and it's so real. And this Mm -hmm. is things that I've been finding challenging and that I've been finding breakthroughs. And that's why I'm even here now and sharing it and, how this is all happening, it's, you know, and now I'm even trying to utilize with what I'm going through in this moment, and hopefully I can share, and I even had, like, I called you up yesterday, and I was telling you, you know, this is on my heart, I think I really want to share and talk about this, because mm-hmm. I also came across mm-hmm. on Instagram, another fitness model, um, she was dealing with her family, saying about, because now this is my thing, I have gone vegan, and I mm-hmm. actually have been going through a very, very challenging time in my life. Um, there's been a lot of changes, a lot of things at once. I haven't shared mm-hmm. any of it. Um, so a lot of people, mm-hmm. just, even on my social medias, they haven't really seen me because a, mm-hmm. a lot of things are going on. And I also i am still trying to fit, find my um, – to find a way to share with what I'm going through. And this is my first step. And also sharing like that, Mm -hmm. these are issues that I've been dealing with and like now being going vegan and everything. So Mm -hmm. the first thing, because I've gone vegan, everybody wants to point out how skinny I've gotten, how much muscle I've lost Mm -hmm. or this or that, which I actually Mm -hmm. did take some time away from the gym. But, and that's, I didn't lose a lot of weight because I went vegan. Yeah, you are going to lose weight if you go vegan. Just, it depends on like Mm -hmm. how your lifestyle was before. But I was also mm-hmm. going through a very mentally and emotionally challenging time. And as mm-hmm. well, I came across different health issues um, because I actually was mm-hmm. um, prepping for a bikini competition. And, you know, I was putting on a lot of muscle mass. And then I just stopped. Mm-hmm. But I had to because, again, it wasn't for me. My whole journey and even with my brand isn't about the exterior view. It's all about finding out mm-hmm. what's going on in the inside. And so even on my mm-hmm. journey, like I've been doing – different tests to even find out mm-hmm. um, what's going on. So well, I did a analysis test, blood, blood test, and I came to find out that I had a high heavy metals in my body. And as well, like this mm-hmm. all goes into, again, lifestyle and how everything comes to play and like what's really going mm-hmm. on and what supplements you're taking, how, is that, how, how does that affect you? And so I really dove into that. And I also in this time had gotten my nutrition certification um, through the Colin Campbell Institute and through E. Cornell. And it was such a life-changing course, and it brought so much clarity. And it's, I'm, I can't wait to really share everything that I've been working on And because um, mm-hmm. I've just kind of like I've just begun, <laughs> you know what I mean? And even though mm-hmm. I just haven't just mm-hmm. begun, but I really feel like, you know, this is, I'm really putting all my puzzle pieces together and really learning to utilize, like I said, again, what I've been going through and creating, again, like this lifestyle of teaching women. It's women empowerment. And like one of my mottos for YC Fit is raising goddesses. And what Mm -hmm. I say that, when I say that, not just even raising our young girl to be goddesses, but it's raising the goddess within you. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and within that, that's, this whole process and again it's all about the lifestyle and the things that we do on a day-to-day basis and mm-hmm. um, building that you know I'm inner so, aura I am so proud of you Ariana and to see what you have been sharing tonight like I cannot wait until part two for you to go into this on our episode not next week but the week after next week for our Black Girls Rock episode and you were just such a phenomenal woman and I love seeing how you're just opening up even more and I am looking forward to it. I'm going to schedule some more time in the show too because when we got you talking tonight I am so excited about (laughs) it. I couldn't be happier and I'm so proud of you and so just keep on diving into this and sharing it with us and I'm looking forward to um, like I said having you back on for our Black Girls Rock episode on October 12th and we're going to have chatting even more about going into your journey. And so, everyone, make sure you check out Ariana Clinton on Instagram, 
check her out on Facebook as well, and go check out her website, YC Fit, which you can also see that on Facebook as well. I'm super excited for what she has in store, and I know that it's going to just go continue to go up and up from here, and so proud of you from tonight, girl. You did that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, and I'm so excited to be a part of this, and I can't wait to share some more. And again, you know, I would love to hear from, you know, the listeners, and I'm more active on the YC Fit Facebook page, so please don't hesitate to um, hit me up. I would love to hear from you guys. Awesome. Next up, we have Living with Fearless Joy. Join pastors, authors, and speakers, Rick and Melissa Wood, as they share tips and testimonies for living a life free from fear and full of joy. Hashtag Living with Fearless Joy to ask them questions and join in the conversation. Take it away, Rick and Melissa. Hey guys, we're so excited to be here with you tonight, and we're going to be talking about the power of our belief. Basically, how what you believe affects the way you experience life, the way you see life, um, the way life happens to you, as some people like to say. And, you know, one thing I want to say on the front end is that belief is not necessarily what unlocks truth. Belief is what helps us come into the alignment of truth. So, you know, for instance, the fact that we were all created as children of God and created in his image, our believing that is not what makes that true. Our believing that allows us to experience the truth that already was in our own lives. Um, There's something that I like to say a lot, and it says the quote that I like to say of myself, I'm quoting myself here, is what we believe about something affects our behavior more than even the truth itself. So, for example, if I believe that Rick over here is a liar, he could be telling me the truth, but because I believe him to be a liar, my experience of Rick is completely different than the reality. And so it's so important that we examine what do we believe about things? What do we believe about God? What do we believe about ourselves? What do we believe about our relationships? What do we believe is possible? What do we believe God wants for us? What do we believe, period? Because our beliefs will bring either forward or backward motion into our lives. Hey, everybody. Just want to say hi as I uh, dive in. Melissa is doing a good job already. I'm so in awe. Like, I'm speechless. She just left me speechless. She taught me everything I need to know right there. But, yeah, as Melissa said, um, this idea of what we believe uh, is, I believe, key to walking. uh, For us, we would say walking a life that Jesus paid for you to walk in. Um, Obviously, as former pastors and spiritual leaders, um, we have a uh, default to uh, Jesus and uh, what that means, Father God and and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So uh, what... I believe the central key is to walking in all that Jesus accessed for us, all that he made available, all that he um, was included in this thing that's called an inheritance is this power of belief. Um, it's the key, I believe, to living a powerful, joy, joy-filled, impacting, um, kingdom-living uh, follower of Jesus is if we understand who we are. And it has to start there. It has to start with um, understanding and knowing who we are. Again, like Melissa said, our belief doesn't make something true. It already is true. Um, And so what happens is um, that when we hear what is true about us, it begins to stir in us this faith. And then as we speak that out, it creates this own um, kind of ecosystem where we're hearing what's true to convince ourselves what is true about us, it begins to uh, lead us down the direction where our lives begin to, uh, what we actually see in our lives begins to be shaped and changed and the things that we, um, the life that we want to live, we live. And we find ourselves, um, I believe, uh, fully abundantly living out what God um, designed, how he designed us to live. I want to say something about that. You know, a lot of times I think we, uh, we hear this kind of stuff and we think, you know, it's name it, claim it, or power of positive thinking and all this kind of stuff. First of all, what's wrong with some positive thinking? I think positive thinking is beneficial. But I think what happens is, is we uh, approach this as if there is some kind of, uh, you know, like pot, at the, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And we have this idea 
of what success or happiness or joy means. And so we think that we're going to name those things or we're going to uh, declare those things, and that's going to be true. But the gospel of the kingdom, the, the, the truth about who Jesus is, all this starts with inside of us and works, it way out, uh, works its way out. Uh, I mean, all of us know that uh, deep down that, that things, possessions, don't bring us happiness or long-lasting joy or fulfillment, that we need to have that that comes from the inside out. So we have to believe that we are uh, created uniquely, like Melissa said, that we have an inheritance that God has given us, that he's on our side, that he's for us, he's never been against us. And as we begin to say those things and believe those things, like even if we don't, quote-unquote, feel like it, uh, the truth inside of us just begins to bubble up and spring over and next thing you know we're living a life that uh, we've always wanted to live and we're happy and we're joyful and we're having fun rick and i as many of you know we used to be uh, pastors of a church and every year when we were pastors we did this kind of you know this year is the year of right and so a couple years ago we did the year of abundance And I remember kicking that off by telling our congregation, this year is not about going after abundance or trying to obtain abundance or trying to create more abundance. This year is about growing in our awareness of the abundance that's already been made available to us. Literally, simply believing that God's given you the keys to the keys to the kingdom or simply believing that anything is possible with him, that we're going to grow in our belief of the abundance that's already been given to us, that we're heirs of Christ, that we're sons and daughters of God. And one way that we can actually change what we believe is by taking stock of what we say. Uh, We talk about this a lot in our segments on living with fearless joy, but it's really important to take stock of what it is, is, of what is coming out of our mouth. You know, in Proverbs, it says that life and death are in the tongue, right? And those who love it will eat its fruit. Basically, if you're going to speak death over your life, that's what you're going to be eating. If you're going to speak life over your life, that's what you're going to be eating. And it's just so important to stop and consider what are we saying, even in our thoughts, even subconsciously. How many times do you get up in the morning and say, I'm not a morning person? Well, guess what? Those words are powerful. And then you begin to truly believe that you're not a morning person. And then your experience becomes that of someone who's not a morning person. So it all goes back to what are you saying? Because what you're saying affects what you believe, and what you believe affects how you experience life. Last thing I want to say before I pass this over to Rick is this great quote um, by a leader named Dan McCollum. Highly encourage you to look him up. He's done a lot of study on um, the power of our words and sound, and it, he's a really great guy. But he says, your experience will always rise to your level of declaration. Basically, that means your life is always going to rise to the level of what you're speaking. So take stock of that and see how that's affecting your thoughts. I mean, if you think about it logically, you know, like even like the example uh, in the sports world, how many people who are uh, great athletes or great athletes now, you know, they said, you know what, I'm really crummy. I'm horrible. I'll never make this. I'll never make the NFL. I'll never make the MLB. You know, you hear them say, no, I always believed in myself. I always believed I could do it no matter what the outside circumstances showed me. I knew that this is what I wanted to do, and I, and I kept working and kept working. Or, or, you know, like Michael Jordan getting cut from his baseball team, a basketball team as a ninth grader, but coming back to be the probably arguably the best uh, basketball player in the history of the world. And he didn't quit. And so how many of those guys turn around and say, yeah, you know, I told myself how crummy I was. That's how I got to where I was. It doesn't work like that. Uh, one of my favorite verses that we talked about a long time is, is Romans ten seventeen. So faith comes from hearing and hearing from, through the word of Christ. What's interesting is in the Greek, it actually literally says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing comes from having heard the word of Christ. So it's like when you hear the truth about who you are, it begins to make it real to you. Now, it's already real but it makes it real to you. So that's why it's important to speak these things out over yourself. You know what? I I am a morning person. 
uh, maybe I'm I'm a I'm a morning person who's temporarily having an unmorning person type of day. You know, I am a positive person who's having may I maybe I'm having a temporary negative time, but I'm a positive person though I may be having a negative experience. It's not the it's not denying reality. It's acknowledging there's a superior reality. There is a superior reality, so it's not like we're in denial. You know, I am a fit person. Maybe having making you know temporarily not, I'm not fit, but I am a fit person deep down inside. It's, and I know that that's what I desire. I know that's how I was made. I was made to function in a certain way. And so it's not denial. It's not, you know, it, it's lining up with God's thoughts and speaking those things out over yourself. Um, you have to declare who you are. You have to declare these things. And I think that's probably some of the, for me as a pastor and a leader for all those years, and some of my problem with, quote, unquote, religion is, you know, religion tells you who you're not. And Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Father God tell you who you are. So you actually need to listen to who the, 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 the Spirit of God says that you are. Don't listen to any competing voices. And so um, just keep going and, and keep looking at that stuff and just believe who you've been created to be. So as we're wrapping up, I just want to say a couple more things. Just to tag on to what Rick was saying, you know, as you're declaring things that should be your reality, should be your truth, that are the truth, even though you're not experiencing that truth. You may be asking the question, well, am I just lying to myself by saying, oh, yes, I am a morning person, even though I don't feel like it. Well, in Joel, in the, in the Bible, in the book of Joel, I love the scripture that says, let the weak say, I am a warrior. Because here's the reality. You've got God himself living inside of you. You have a Jesus who is with you at all times. You have the Holy Spirit who never forsakes you. And with those three, absolutely nothing is impossible. So you could declare the most powerful statement in the world, and even if it doesn't feel like reality to you, it is reality for God, and God is with you. And And so you're not lying to yourself. You're simply allowing your declaration to cause your mind to come into alignment with the truth of who you were made to be and who you are. So I hope some of that sticks with you guys tonight. I hope you were able to get a nugget or two of of wisdom that helps you on your way in life. You can find Rick and I on social media. I'm Melissa Joy Wood. um, That's on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And you can find Rick at Rick C. Wood on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And we look forward to talking to you guys next time on Living with Fearless Joy. Ooh, that was so good. Shout out to Rick and Melissa Wood. That was absolutely amazing. Right now we have NDRE with strength, courage, and wisdom. And this goes perfectly with what Rick and Melissa were talking about, but I didn't even know what they were going to be talking about tonight. Let's see, we're so in sync. Keep listening to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Are you looking for a dynamic musical artist, performer, host, or inspirational speaker for your next event? What about a mentor, vocal instructor, or workshop leader for your school, company, or seminar. Contact Sade Champagne for countless professional services that are sure to fit your particular need. She is an in-demand, award-winning, and critically acclaimed musical artist, performer, inspirational speaker, and entrepreneur who is invited all around the world. She is known for having a powerful voice, turning ideas into action, creating, directing, and executive producing popular charitable and inspirational events and bringing out the gold in others. Her services are for all ages, backgrounds, and environments. Contact Sade Champagne at S-A-D-E-C-H-A-M-P-A-G-N-E-M-U-S-I-C at gmail.com. That's Sade Champagne Music at gmail.com to book her for your next event or project. Hi, this is Ariana Carde from the Supermodel and You segment. Keep listening to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Welcome back to the Sade Champagne Show, everyone. Next up, we have Wellness Made Simple. Join certified holistic life coach, clinical aromatherapist, and inspirational speaker, Veronica Escobar Winters, to get some easy and practical tips 
on how to start living a holistic life, bringing unity to your mind, body, and spirit. Hashtag Wellness Made Simple to ask her your health questions and wellness questions and to join in the conversation. Hi, this is Veronica Esquivel winters and welcome to the Wellness Made Simple segment. Today, I'm going to give you some quick and easy tips on how to keep your immune system up and prepared to fight the cold and flu season that's right around the corner. Why is it important to keep our immune system healthy and strong? Well, our immune system is our body's defense against infection and illness. It recognizes the cells that makes up our body and knows and gets rid of anything unfamiliar. When we have a healthy immune system, it protects us by first creating a barrier that stops those invaders from entering the body. When our immune system works properly, this complex defense system can keep health problems from cancer to the common cold at bay. With that being said, that's why it is really important for us to make sure that we keep our immune system up and running strong, not just for this flu and cold season that's around the corner, but really year round. Here are some quick and simple tips that you can go ahead and apply. The first one is to strengthen your gut. In our gut lives important microbes that not only help your body digest food, they also help regulate our metabolism, hunger, weight, and immune system. This is key because 70% of your immune system is in the gut. To keep a healthy gut, you can start with some probiotics. Probiotics help reduce inflammation and prevent infection. They may also help reduce the severity of a cold or a flu. Probiotics can be found at your local health food store in the form of capsules, drinks, and yogurts for start. Fermented foods, for example, unpasteurized sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha, and kefir also support bacterial health. Next is eating foods high in antioxidants. Vegetables and fruits will boost your overall health and help protect you from the flu and other viruses, as well as boosting your immune system year-round. Dark leafy greens, berries, salmon, and sweet potatoes help build your immune system defense. Next is zinc. Zinc can be found in foods such as spinach, pumpkin seeds, nuts, and beans. These are known to help shorten the duration of a cold by a few days. Eating foods that contain zinc along with taking vitamin C supplements can be a great powerhouse combo to a healthy and strong immune system. Another thing you can do is keep up with your exercise regimen and make sure you get plenty of sleep. Research shows that people who exercise in moderation report fewer colds. Exercise also is an immune booster, so grab your favorite walking shoes and go for a 30-minute walk. Also, shoot for at least 7 hours of sleep a night and try fitting in a 20-minute power nap. Keeping surfaces clean is also a big plus. Some contamination hotspots are phones, computers, and desks. Tea tree oil, which is an essential oil, has antibacterial properties. You can find a surface cleaner with it in it, or you can simply make your own by combining equal parts of distilled vinegar and water and several drops of tea tree oil, and there you go. Last but not least, you can improve circulation in your home. You can do this by simply opening your windows daily to air it out. Also, getting plants like aloe vera, spider plants, and peace lilies are some plants that naturally filter out common volatile organic compounds. It naturally filters out any bacteria or anything that you don't want in your house, and at the same time, you get to look at and have beautiful plants around your house. I hope that this was all helpful tips that you can attain simply and apply it to your everyday life. Now remember, you don't have to do all of them all at once. You can pick a few of them, start where you're at, and see the ones that stand out to you and go for those. Trust me, they will make a huge difference in your life. Once again, this is Veronica Escobar winters with the Wellness Made Simple segment on the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Thank you for your time, and thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight. Thank you for downloading, subscribing, and sharing my radio show. Next week, we are bringing back one of my favorite guests and dear friends, professional comedian, actress, host, and writer, Rasika Mather, and professional choreographer, dancer, and instructor, Byron Bacow. 
bulk of their work has been viewed all around the world and famous media outlets such as MTV, BET, and more. And they have worked with celebrities like Chris Brown, Nick Cannon, and many more. We also have a brand new What's Going On with Christina Renee segment, Wellness Made Simple with Veronica segment, and Say What segment. Thanks to Grindheart Radio for the opportunity to create my own radio show. Thanks to Travis Miller for creating and producing my theme song and to Scott Swish for mixing the song. Thank you to my special celebrity guest, Ernest Owens. Thanks to my castmates, Ariana Carde, Rick and Melissa Wood, and Veronica Escobel Winters. I could not have asked for a greater show tonight. I'm so proud of my cast. I'm proud of this network, and I'm thankful for every opportunity I'm given and for this platform. Our final song of the night is Try C with Careless. Thanks for listening to the Sade Champagne Show, and see you next Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time right here on Grind Hard Radio. Thank you.